So what exactly are you doing, Sloppy Sock? I'm creating parasocial relationships on the internet. Huh, that sounds pretty lucrative. I don't do it for the money. I just happen to get paid by the wonderful companies that provide all this gear. That sounds like bullshit. Scuffed Scotty sent $5. Sloppy Sock. I will treat you like a goddess. Please let me tongue punch your fart box. Oh, so you enabled super chats too? Oh, that. <laughs> I just do that so that I can connect with my audience. But Sex Bingo sent $4. When I think about wearing you on my feet, I have an explosion in my pants. All right, all right. It's all a grift. Are you happy? Let's go do something that feels less greasy. That sounds like a good idea. Hi, my name is Shu Teak. Sometimes the president sends me coded messages through my TV. Today we're going to take a look at this. The Cappy VP28. This DIY 500 series unit is based heavily off of the full channel of an old API console. Cappy has a reputation of creating amazing 500 series versions of old API console components. Rumor has it that Jeff Steiger, the creator of Cappy, broke down his old API 3232 console into its individual components and then put it all back together for memory just because somebody double dog dared him to do it. While VP28s sound great on a wide variety of sources, I find that they really shine on guitars. Today we're going to talk about the controls, listen to some sound samples, and then take a look at my build notes. At the end, I'll wrap it up with my final thoughts, including who I think this is best suited for. Working our way from top to bottom, first we have the preamp gain. Preamp gain sets the level of the first gain stage. Turn this up to give the signal more color. Color is one of many ambiguous words used on the internet to describe the sonic characteristic imparted by a particular piece of gear. The color on this unit is achieved using transformer saturation. This control is stepped, making it easy to recall a previous setting. There's a signal indicator LED to let you know if the unit is picking up a signal or not. I find this little blinking light to be reassuring. The polarity flip button reverses the polarity of the signal. You can use the mic button to switch between mic and line level input modes. In line level mode, input impedance is set to 10K and the level is dropped by 35 decibels. The pad button provides 20 decibels of signal attenuation. If you find yourself with the output or preamp bottomed out, you can use the pad to give you more range to control the levels. The unit is also capable of providing 48 volt phantom power. The high pass filter has a few different options to choose from. You can select between a 40, 80, and 160 Hz high pass filter. You can also toggle the slope of the high pass between negative 6 and negative 12 decibels. The last control is the channel fader. I think of this like the master volume of the VP28. It doesn't impart the color that the preamp gain does. If I have the preamp higher, I back this down and vice versa to get my overall volume where I want it. When I record, I target around negative 12 decibels. Like the preamp control, this one is also stepped. When it comes to setting the preamp gain, there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about finding something that sounds good to you. So play around with it and find out what you like. I got a pistol. I think it's loaded I got it pointed at the back of my head Look at me baby I went and voted I won't be happy till the river runs red I'm dialed in My TV talks to me It's got all these dirty secrets Make it hard not to believe I'm all amped up Yeah.
tracks that you heard recorded just before this, those were all done using the VP28, with the exception of the drums. If you like that song, there's a free download link in the description. Let's start by recording some guitar. I have an SM57 and a BIV1 running into a pair of VP28s. For those who are curious, the BIV1 is very similar to a Royer 121, but at a fraction of the cost. If you can get your hands on one, I'd highly recommend it. My amp today is this Choreatone 18 watt. My guitar has a Stonewall Pickups signature strat in the neck position. I'm keeping the preamp of the VP28 close to Unity to stay on the cleaner side of things. I'm going to record direct using this JDI passive box. I have the preamp pushed past Unity to give the signal more character. I'll be using the neck position on my bass guitar, which has a Stonewall Pickups Jazzmaster pickup. Lastly, we'll track some vocals. I'll be using this 12-251 tube mic I built using a kit from microphoneparts.com. I'll be pushing the preamp past Unity Gain in order to give it more saturation. I'm just an A-bomb, stuck in neutral. Somebody light my fuse, I got nothing left to lose. My motor's running. Check engine on, I can try to plant the thought, you just have to let it spawn. I'm just an A-bomb, stuck in neutral. Somebody light my fuse, I got nothing left to lose. My motor's running, check engine on, I can try to plant the thought, you just have to let it spawn. Building the VP28 was pretty straightforward. There's no formal build guide, but some absolute unit named Chunger put together a full picture guide that's available at groupdiy.com. GroupDIY is a great place to learn, ask questions, and dive deeper into the DIY world. Now, let's take a look at some of my build notes. These two guys here are the CA2520 style discrete operational amplifiers. Don't let the density of these intimidate you. They're just like anything else you'd be soldering together. Take your time with it and you'll be just fine. An op amp allows you to amplify a signal with consistent results. You can find different op amps all over the place. There are alternative op amps on the Cappy store, on forums like Group DIY, or from someone like Scott Liebers. I hear Scott's Red Dot 2520s are pretty great and I plan on comparing them to the Cappy 2520s at some point. The daughter board containing the high pass filter is located here. All VP28 kits ship with a 2623 output transformer, but there's an option to upgrade to a Litz wire version. Litz wire is multi stranded and designed to reduce proximity effect and skin effect. In this application, the Litz wire should provide a more uniform high form frequency response and a slightly bigger bottom end. Make sure you pay attention to the wiring of the Litz transformer. The wire colors are different from the standard transformer, so there will be differences from what you see in the build guide. The CA2622 input transformer is designed to replicate the tone of a vintage microphone input transformer on a 1970s API recording console. The signal LED is located here, 
You need to put this funny little right angle in the leads to seat it properly. I used a pair of needle nose pliers for this task. Soldering the LEDs can be a bit challenging due to the confined space you'll be working in. This type of work is where having different soldering tips can come in handy. You can pick up packs of tips on the cheap. You may also notice that the color order for my buttons is different than the other builds. That's because I messed up. I accidentally put two white ones on before I realized it was supposed to be white, gray, white. Once they're on, it's nearly impossible to get them off without damaging something. That, or I'm just a little on the slow side. So would I recommend the VP28? Freak yeah, but I'd recommend it. My VP28s are my go-to when it comes to tracking guitar, and they're great for a DI'd bass. I also really enjoy these when I want something for vocals that's a little less pristine. It really doesn't take much to get these pre's to a spot where they sound good. Whether you're looking for an entry point into the DIY 500 series world, or you're looking for something a little bit new, these puppies won't disappoint. Even if you're a total slob who lacks the creativity or ambition to do a DIY project, I would still recommend picking up a pair of these. Josh Scott sent $7. Shooteek. I want to smell what your smell smell like. Sorry, Josh. Gotta go. I'm just an A-bomb stuck in neutral.